Catch the grills, you bastard! <laughs> Cover my tracks like butter, so where the bread be? I see beef is dead meat. Who that yes. the president? Yeah. yeah, me. No one scare me. No, yeah, yeah, no, that's that's literally. I I got laid off. Is is this the first time yeah. you've been laid off? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was my first like job in media, so like my first job and my first layoff in the same. It gets better. Uh, it gets easier. Yeah, like, once you get to like 17th job, 17th layoff, you don't feel a thing. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> Have any of you guys been laid off? What's like, who, who has the most layoffs here? Like out of, out of you guys? I think I'm the only person here who has been laid off. Besides I've been you. laid off from three jobs in a row. <laughs> Oh, okay. I've been asked to stop being involved in projects, but I don't know if that counts. <laughs> what does that mean? Um, that sounds really sucks. Yeah. It's not like through work, just like, you know, side hustles. <laughs> like I've, I've like, you know, side hustles have gone down the drain for me. If that counts as being- Can you please stop selling weed on Grindr? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, well, this is Nersey, the uh, podcast where we talk about getting laid off from media. I'm Slava. I'm Drew. I'm Troy. Today we're joined by writer, editor, content creator, podcast producer, Celtic fan, unfortunately, plug music explainer, <laughs> now turn party promoter, Mano Sindorosan. Did I say that right? I'll, I'll, I'll guide you through it. I'll guide you through it. It's, Mano, it's Mono, Mano, Mono, 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 Mano Sindorosan. Yes, yeah, yeah. I'm fucking it, it up. It, Mono, yeah. But not, but thanks for having me, regardless of pronunciation yes. issues. Yes, thank you for coming on. Um, it's an honor to be joined by a media mogul uh, such as yourself. Media mogul? Uh, wow, that's that's yeah. crazy. You guys are you guys are media moguls. We're in a circle of uh, this is a circle. Uh, of we're, we're 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 media uh we're we're, we're media stalwarts. Media better. free agents ready to sign for the media veterans minimum. Media mercenaries yeah um what is what's plug music oh god S starting with the heavy hitters um <laughs> i just don't know like quickly though so you know zaytoven you know like atlanta like trap music i feel like it was just yep. a bunch of kids who heard that shit and then they also heard like mario and video game music because okay. they're like 26 to 30 like they're the gen z zillennial cuspers so they mm -hmm. heard the video game shit. They heard the they heard the uh, Atlanta shit, and they were like, "Let's combine these." And they probably also heard like some Chicago like sickle Mo sickle mob and shit like that. And they combined all that and made plug. Is it that like that one guy who kind of raps like Soldier Boy? Wait, which one? Tisa Korean? Yeah, is that plug music? I I feel like he's probably made plug music. I I, I, I wouldn't. That wasn't the person that came to my head. I was thinking like Cardi. Or old Cardi is plug music. Old... I'm too old for Playboy yeah. Cardi. Boy, that kind of attitude you are. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love some Playboy Cardi, man. I play that shit in the wine shop and fucking people just walk in very confused, but those are <laughs> like around and buy shit. So like, there you go. Drew, what was the, who's the rapper that you heard where you were like, I can't, like was Cardi the, the breaking point or was there somebody before that? Or uh, No, I just had never had any interest in listening to Playboy Cardi. I think the rapper that broke me was Takeshi69. Um, that was just like, that was a bridge too far. That was a crazy time. He's just bad, that, that I feel. Was a fear. I don't know. I, don't, I, I That's just trash music. I don't know. I feel like Cardi, I mean, like, you can maybe like hear the, the, you can like hear what's good about that. Like, he, I love there's Cardi, enough man. critics just... who fuck with him. He just feels like a combination of like Young Thug and Hundred Gex, where it's just like I don't know what the fuck to expect on this next thing. I mean, yeah, how like, do you guys think the music's gonna sound the next album? I think he might put out his magnum opus. I think this might be the one where he like finally gets that like, oh no, this is fine art, you know? Yeah, I also I'm bullish on it. I really didn't like Whole Lot of Red though. Really? Yeah. Why did it's you like just it? like too experimental for me. It's too much. I like uh, I like Magnolia. That's like my favorite one. It's like ASMR music. I like when he goes beep, beep, beep. I think like, even for me personally, like Dial It and Self Titled are the best ones. And then Whole Lotta Red was like the one where everybody was like trying to make it into like a big deal, which it is, but it's also like not his best music. Well, that's never the good one. A lot of times, like if you need, if you need to absorb the yeah. narrative going into the album to properly enjoy the album, then that means the album's not like very good, I think. Slava, you're 
Yeah. You're arguing against music journalism. Well, like the pro music journalism. Like, I was about to say, man. Well, it's like, I don't want no fucking context, man. This is good or not. Yeah. No, well, not context around like what they're talking about, but around like what's happening at the time. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I wrong? So music, music criticism is dead or is, it still matter. It, we're questioning whether or not it matters. How do we feel about uh, the reactions to Utopia this week? Honestly, uh, I haven't heard a blockbuster album I could care less about. I listened to the Drake part. And... I, listened, I listened to the album, like Future sounds great on it, Scissor sounds great on it, Beyonce, that was a cool thing that happened. Um, Cardi was actually pretty fun on that, but yeah, it, it's like the whole thing with like a lot of HBO shows, there's a lot more like spectacle than substance over it. Like, I couldn't tell you shit about Travis Scott after listening to this album. I mean, I don't think that we should be asking Travis Scott to be making an album about things. Like, I think, like, we say this, but like, Imagine if Travis Scott made an album where every song was like about social justice. Like no one would be happy. I'd be kind of curious. That, that, that should be. Maybe, I'm not gonna maybe, lie. Maybe like, maybe just like maybe just like a, a, his 444. <laughs> like yo, Travis Scott talking about blowing up pipelines would be fucking sick. Okay, well, <laughs> that's <laughs> different. Yeah. Let's be real. <laughs> No, Travis Scott should be making songs about blowing up pipelines. Like the movie How to Blow Up a Pipeline. If you bomb an abortion it, clinic, I'm going to bomb your house. Like, yeah, like that would yeah. be so fucking sick. Yeah. I mean, that's cool, but that's like, you know, I'm just imagining like Travis Scott like suddenly deciding, okay, I'm going to make a coup album. Like a January like, 6th album? We got to get Joe Biden the fuck up out of here. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, I, no, I, no. I, like, I, he'd, be, <laughs> he'd be wrong, but he'd be interesting. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about Forgiato Blow. <laughs> I am talking about. The coup, as in Boots Riley and Pam the Funkstress. Oh, oh, of course. Oh, okay. God, that took me a second as well. Yeah. I, I thought you were straight up talking about like a coup. <laughs> like, yeah. and uh, I, imagine if Travis Scott like let it coup. Close. Like, and you know, kids were just running to like the White House and like. Rage to the yo, White Travis House. 2040, man. Whatever the hell is playing. Trav Tifa. Sickle mode. Like, I mean, they, were, they were literally going sicko mode. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, no, I think that that would be an appropriate thing for Travis Scott to do. Uh, like bluntly rap about armed revolt. I think that would make me personally very happy. That actually would make me listen to Travis Scott more. Yeah, it's uh, like, it's not a bad album, but it's just kind of like watching fireworks, you know, where it's kind of like, oh, I'm having the time of my life and then it's over. And it's like, I don't remember a single detail of that for real, for real. I just like had my eyes wide open looking at bright stuff. The first time I heard this album, I was like extremely stoned out of my mind and just lying in bed and it was like pretty amazing. But then I just like woke up in the morning and clicked through the songs I thought I liked and I, I don't, I was like, what What was I thinking? Like, it was just a classic, <laughs> like you don't smoke weed as a music critic when reviewing albums moment for me, I don't know. On the other hand, I think that's also contingent upon whether the expectation of the listener is that they themselves will be stoned. How many times do you guys like listen to an album before you form a, an opinion on it? An opinion that I'll express out loud, probably like two, three, four. Uh, skimming through about three. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to the intro. I'm just like, this is ass. Mm. I think for me, it's like. It depends on the album. That's a boring answer, but like Travis Scott took like two listens. What's a deep? What's it? What's an actually good album from this year? From this year, SZA, JPEG yeah. Mafia, Danny Brown. Oh yeah, scaring the hoes. I'm not gonna lie. I still gotta spend. I I I saw JPEG Mafia do it live at Pitchfork Fest a couple weeks ago, and that made me like want to listen to it. But I hadn't really heard it until that point. It it's is probably my favorite the, album of the year. Yeah, it's by far the best record of the year to me. Um. um like all genres yeah it's also like one of the only albums i've listened to this year it's like that and jason is bold and uh, y'all yeah, yeah, boys heard this new uh carly ray album that dropped on friday no slava won't even look at me when he says <laughs> I'm trying to find out what came out this year all i see is pressa and we introduce ourselves mm. as music critics I, i'm a podcast <laughs> critic now i mean i write one review for pitchfork a year like i got as long as i'm up on like that one thing Thanks that's so. the real utopia yeah. is everybody just gets one pitchfork review a year everybody yeah that's like one of the proposals for changing congress is just like have congress be selected by lot mm -hmm. where it's like no elections it's just like a true random representative we just pick a guy. Yeah. we just pick a guy we do a lottery
Exactly. Yes. We you do know. the draft and it's like, oh, I don't want to do this, man. Tell them to have like shin splints. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing is you do in that same fashion, you do find some of the most amazing like music criticism. Just some random guy on Twitter has like a really good opinion about one song. And now you can see that. I feel like YouTube comments might be some of the best, uh, like, not even like, not maybe not music criticism, but just like line, like bars, just like vibe encapsulation. Yeah, I, 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 I wish I had thought of that line. I, I could use that in like a review. Maybe sometimes I do. <laughs> maybe sometimes still from YouTube comments, but like, it's just like, especially on like, not even like new stuff, like like old, like disco and stuff like that. They'll just have like the most bountiful like comment sections, just full of like damn near personal essays stuff that would like with good edit could get published somewhere i don't know oh okay one album it might be a little too weird to be album of the year but um did i tell y'all about old time hockey yet old time hockey hockey h-a-w-k-e-y but um yeah it's this dude who found his grandpa's old journals and uh he just reads entries over like ambient nature noise (laughs) wow yeah, it's fucking sick. Actually, you know what else is really good from this year? Do y'all know Torn Hawk? No. He's like, he's on Lies, like L-I-E-S, the techno label. But he just put out this year an album of like motivational speeches that is him ranting about like uh, how you should do what you want and not what the Ramada Inn tells you to do <laughs> um, over like wait, 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 very... Wait, wait. Over instrumentals, right? This is an acapella. <laughs> no, no, no. Over like very chill synth music. Is this a manifesto or is this like an album? It's an album. It's like a it's like a goof one off thing. Like he has this character that is a motivational speaker, mm. uh, who is like sort of a mid to low tier hotel convention center style guy, and he made an entire album as this character doing his motivational speeches and they're just really fucking funny. And he talks in this very thick, like Jersey blue collar accent. Drew, you should check out DJ Lucas. I found him on TikTok. He's from that state. I can't pronounce where Boston is. Western mass. Oh, yeah, wait, try to pronounce it. Slava. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Really? Yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah. 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 There's Ma- oh, Mass- yes, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. No like, way. DJ Lucas has been around since like we were we were young and cool. Oh, he's old. Dark World, yeah. Yeah, he's on TikTok. He's like pushing. He's like closer to thirty. Damn. He's not like old old. I feel like, I feel like he's like he's been like rapping for a while, but he like really got good as a rapper in the last like th- two or three years. Okay, so it's like Matt Ox. <laughs> he's definitely like had multiple arcs. Like I remember when I was in, I I went to college out in like Western Mass and uh, oh where'd you go? He would just like uh, Williams College, just like this tiny tiny ass school, Western Mass, like Northwest bubble. Did you ever go to Thurston Moore's like record store in the woods? I don't think so. What's it called? I don't know. It's just a. <laughs> Does it have a name? It's the one record store in the bad? woods that Thurston Moore's had. What's oh, the first album so. you bought? Oh God, <laughs> Fabulous from Nothing to Something. Probably. <laughs> That's good. That's, that's cool. No, that's, a, that's a good first album. Yeah, we've never talked about this one. What are, y'all's, pretty, what are y'all's first albums? Valley Country Grammar. Okay. All right. That's a good one. I think the first album that my parents gave me as a gift was Chuck Berry's The Great 28. And the first one I bought on my own was probably Will In Them. <laughs> Trey, how about you? All right, so the first albums I bought were myself. My dad was in, like, one of those Columbia, uh, like, CD club things in the back of magazines where, like, every month you just got, like, seven CDs for 20 bucks or some shit. Yep. And so I signed up for the first month with some birthday money, and I got, uh, getting jiggy with it, the first Backstreet Boys album. And, uh, Puff Daddy and the Family, No Way Out. That's a solid representative sample of, like... It's, it's kind of like who I would become later on in life. Bad boy. Uh, anyways, no bells. What is it? Why is it called that? Why did you start it? Um, so three questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's let, let's first no bells. introduction of what no bells is. It's a music blog. I started it actually just as like a sub stack 
before mm-hmm. I realized like nobody was like really opening their emails to read it. And also I didn't really like the design of the Substack. Um, so that was like back in 2021 or so. So I just made it into a website. Um, and then I, I kind of started it because I was like at the time, like temping at NPR and like trying to, you know, write about music. Cause I didn't really have like an outlet for that. Um, besides just like trying to freelance and not getting anything accepted. So I started that around then. And then through like, the pandemic a few people started to express interest in like writing for it um we were i I guess the first pieces i was publishing were like like ringing a lot of bells oh god i (laughs) I did not anyways um oh i get it people were like oh shit this person's writing about like i i did not okay anyways i did not intend to do that um there were (laughs) people were like oh this person's like covered plug music nobody's done that or like this person like a, a few other like weird niches niches of uh internet rap and shit like that so basically after that uh i got a few contributors joining me Mm -hmm. um and like i would edit them and somebody like expressed interest in designing so that became a job on the team um and then yeah it just kind of like became a little publication thing after that i I still like to call it i kind of like blog though i don't know it's just like it's cute. I don't know. Publication sounds kind of evil. So yeah, publication. I mean, whatever. Everything's a publication. Also, everything is a blog. It's it's a web log of stuff. Yeah. You said it grew during the pandemic. And, you know, I think that people of our generation, we watched a lot of music logs either die or pivot to some other shit or just get like way worse. And so it's really cool to be talking to you because your site is growing and is getting better. And like, also like there are very few places to find good writing about music anymore. So like, what do you attribute sort of your growth to as well as like, why are there so few people starting music blogs that are getting traction or are there? And maybe I'm just old. I don't know. Um, I think what set us apart initially was, like I said, just the subject matter. Like we were covering stuff that um, people definitely wanted to read about, but like didn't know where to read about it. And then at the same time, other people were like, did not know about the shit we were writing about. And we're like, huh, this is like really interesting. And we're very curious about it. Um, like, I think a good example would be like the, the, the core core coverage we did a couple months ago, which like, mm-hmm. I remember when the writer Kieran wrote about that stuff, Kieran Press Reynolds. Half the people were like, oh my God, finally someone wrote about this. And the other half were like, what the hell is this? Like, this is crazy. And like, I feel like a lot of our articles like consistently are like hit that, like in the middle of that Venn diagram, which like leads <laughs> to them getting popular. And that's what led to a lot of growth in the past couple of years. As for why other blogs don't succeed, I mean, I think I think I've actually seen a few other blogs like doing doing pretty well, like at least the ones like in our orbit. Mm-hmm. Like this, this guy Andrew Matson, he writes he runs the blog called Finals, which is like honestly what inspired our blog. Like I was just like, oh shit, like that's cool. You're doing that during the pandemic because he used to be like also a writer that used to write for a bunch of other places, and I was like, that's that's really dope that you're doing that and. uh covering very interesting things there. So I was like, might as well do it as well. I think he posts a bit less frequently than we do, but you know, he's had a lot of events and like tried to like actually create community around it in mm-hmm. a way that's um, pretty, it's pretty inspiring for what we're doing. So um, I can't speak as much to like what other blogs are like not doing though, because I, I just, I just feel like people are on way different wavelengths, if that, if that makes sense. Or I guess maybe what I'm asking is like, why aren't more people trying to do this they're like i look around and you know there are a few music sub stacks i follow but they're all like individuals and you know there are also a few like individual critics who i read and i guess like i don't know yeah yeah i think like music writing and maybe not music writing just just writing in general in the past few years seems to have like turned towards um this individualistic mindset of, I mean, I think literally these newsletter platforms like Substack and Ghost like encourage that. And for the people who are doing it and doing it well, that's like good on them and stuff. Like I I definitely 
read a few Substacks, but like, I feel like at the same time, uh, it's de- it's like sort of pushed the focus away from uh, community based writing and like blogging. And there's a few places like we all know that are doing good work. Like, I mean, like shout out Hellgate and like a few of these other like you know worker owned like kind of communal hubs for writing right now. But like, I don't know. Uh, I guess that didn't answer your question. I was just kind of describing a trend, but I don't know exactly no, no, no. why that turn happened. No, nah, I mean, like, it just sounds like one of those things you could just say capitalism and it's like, yep. I mean, yeah, like... And that, that's exactly that's why. Yeah. But the other thing, too, is, like, all these... There are cool things on, like, Instagram, but they're all, like, Instagram accounts, pretty much. I don't know if you would call it a blog, like what you're doing with Nobels. Like, Kids Take Over is, like, a really, Absolutely. really good platform with like really good aesthetic and they do interviews in a really cool way where the artist sends voice notes so like that's really cool and you can learn a lot about an artist just by scrolling instagram but there's nothing beyond that there's no like community like what you're talking about they're not you know throwing parties like what you just did or are doing you know where are people finding you are people going to the domain and like hitting nobels.blog and finding you that way or yeah i think i think what's cool about it's like um it's a lot of, it seems to be actually a decent amount of word of mouth, uh, especially since like, I feel like a few of us relocated to New York. It's like been a lot of like, just people finding out about us through like other people and stuff like that. Um, Twitter is definitely where like our most, like if you look at the metrics, like the most shit goes up on there and gets the most readership through there. I'm trying to figure out a way to like, also do like the newsletter thing, but I also don't really personally fuck with newsletters like that. So I don't know. Like I don't. Yeah, I see you. Um, I see you post about how much. I, I, I'm, I'm I see you post into, about how much it sucks to like be a content creator, like to like feel like you're being sucked dry of like every single thing that you're doing. You have to commit it to writing to like let your fans know or let your supporters know how you're doing. Oh, it's it's so annoying. Like, I think one. I think like a lot of platforms right now are just in this mindset of like like showing all of their cards and like just being always you know always like the BTS for everything. Like we need the BTS for this and this and this. And then like, like, and I'm just a guy like you and like, you can right. do this too. And like, I don't know. That's like, that's like cute, I guess. But like, <laughs> I think what made like, I don't know, like I never really was like around for like the old, like rap magazines and stuff, but like just like reading them like through like digitized versions and shit like that. Like it's cool to see just how much they, they were just cooler. I don't know. They just have way more like they, they were mysterious. They were like weird people writing for these places it was like not dude there was like a certain thrill like towards like the last week of a month or the first week afterwards when like your bookstore or newsstand or whatever would have the new issue of vibe or the source and you had no idea who the fuck was going to be on the cover exactly you had no idea who was going to be on the cover yeah but it was just like oh okay yeah Lil wayne and bird man here we go yeah I mean, the labels knew who was going to be on the cover because they were. I, I was like it. fucking twelve years old, not working at the label, so I didn't have any idea. Who was gonna be on the cover. Yeah. Platinum pieces and the platinum chain with the platinum watches and the platinum ring. Platinum ring. Oh, at what point were you like? At what point do you feel like you became like a music nerd? And how did you? How did this express itself? Like, how were you finding music over which to be a nerd? So I go to India uh in summers a little bit when i was like just growing up and then in middle school a little bit uh and also and also i'd go to the bay area a decent amount because like i have a lot of family in both these places so i have like i have this old this one older cousin who like i think made me like a music nerd he he basically i we would be like hanging out in india and then also in the bay a little bit and like he'd just be like he had this psp and he would just like be making me listen to like the most random like it was just like i was like 12 or 13 and he was making me listen to like young jeezy's like like first album and like lil wayne mixtapes and like wait a second how is young uh, jeezy's first album random i i don't know like for me first <laughs> like I, I i had no context i was not like i had no friends who listened to this stuff like around me like at the time like i was they were they were listening to like I mean, I, I grew up in Master, like suburban Massachusetts for context. So I, I have, I had no friends listening to like Jeezy until he got like really popular, probably. So okay, um, that's like such a, such a strange thing for me to hear because I grew up in the South when Jeezy was first hitting, and like sure. 
so yeah. many kids at my school had like the fucking snowman tees and they actually banned the snowman t-shirts i ask if they ban if they banned them at your school yeah that was you a big deal yeah, you can't ban the snowman can't do that and yet <laughs> and, then, and they did it oh. Wait, why did they ban the snowman? They're like, what's what's wrong with gang related <laughs> shit that they use as the argument? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there were some places that weren't were, uh, letting you wear white tees after uh, them franchise boys put that song out. Oh yeah. In my white tee. Yep. In my white tee. In my white tee. Yep. It's, it's, it's Wait, what's insane. yeet? What's yeet? What's yeet? What's you yeet? Like I'm, I'm, not even this, I'm older than you. And I can't I'm not tell if you're being ironic. I just got out of jail and I know who yeet yeah. is. I'm I am a leftist golf writer now. Like I'm not a fucking. <laughs> I'm actually a little bit surprised. I feel I feel like I feel like you should know who yeet is. This is yeah, this is just due diligence, dude. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, no, I think that I'm. He's the, he's think... like the white young thug. Like, yeah, it's. He is a he's like a white, he is a white rapper from. Was like Oregon and Washington State or some shit like that. Right, Portland, Oregon, yeah. Oregon, lawless. I uh, no the only the only like Portland or Washington State rapper that I will acknowledge is A Wax. Is somebody else gonna ask who the fuck A Wax? Yeah, is? Absolutely <laughs> not. I don't give a shit. <laughs> no, A Wax is so good. <laughs> Nah, Listen to his album Everlasting nah, Money. All right, AWAX. I don't know if I can trust your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> no, dude, I I don't trust any of your opinions because y'all have never listened to AWAX, who like had a monomaniacal beef with Hustler. <laughs> I know Hustlers. Yeah, well, AWAX is the guy who fucking hates him, <laughs> or they're cool <laughs> now, but he well, could yeah, have well, been well, much well, bigger. What was going on there? What was going on there? I don't know. You gotta ask Willie Staley. Dude, why was why uh, was why was AWACS beefing with Hustle? Isn't Hustler from like the Bay or from like? Yeah. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Well, yeah, somewhere. AWACS yeah. is technically from Pittsburgh, but he spent his formative years in Walla Walla <laughs> in jail, okay. and so he claims both Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, California, as well as Walla Walla. Walla Walla, Australia. How is he from I was say, is that in California but ended up in jail in Walla Walla? I don't know. I'm not the keeper of the tale of AWACS, or I guess I am. And so it is a fair I mean, Yeah, you are in I don't know. If you do federal time, you have to go to Oklahoma, and then they assess you, and then they put you wherever they want. It doesn't matter where you, like, really are from. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, I trust slap on that. Anyways, let's get back to, <laughs> to you guys making fun of me for not knowing who Yeet is, not – for making fun of me for knowing who AWAX is. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was apparently a fateful night in Tacoma, Washington, consumed by gang warfare that would land him in Walla Walla State Prison for five years for manslaughter. At 16 yeah. years old, AWAX went from street thug to convict, and there was no turning back. That, who, oh, that's from Last FM. Okay. So he probably wrote that himself. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say like this is wildly irresponsible journalism. Um, <laughs> no, that's just an artist biography. He he is he was for a time the connoisseur's choice of something of like sing rapping. I'm telling you, Everlasting Money is an incredible album. Like, it's so he like, was like the Pacific Northwest Kirk Bangs. I was gonna say Kirk Bangs. That's crazy. You said Kirk mm. Bangs. Yeah, but he like he preceded that. He was like a hyphy rapper. And oh. then sort of got into sing rap, um, but like he's got he's got some records pulling strings, great record. Um, All right, I'm gonna look him hey, up. Kirko Bangs. Yeah, he's actually good, and this. he's like accessible. He's very accessible as well. Yeah, it was like or like he was kind of like for a while doing the. You remember when French Montana made that song Sanctuary? Yeah, that's a good song. So, like, Everlasting Money is an entire album that's kind of like Sanctuary. Okay. Hmm. Can I tell a Kirk Bang story real quick? That's... Please do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I was interviewing Rich Homie Kwan, and we were doing, like, this video interview. So this bit is committed to video. You can look it up. And we were walking through this art gallery, and the artist said that he was inspired by Kurt Cobain's suicide letter. And Rich Homie Kwan looks at me, He's like, suicide letter? And I'm like, no, Kurt Cobain, not Kirk Bangs. 
Oh man, oh, Rich Homie Kwan so probably had a huge like oh. adrenaline rush. <laughs> I was like, oh no. Thank God you were there for Rich Homie Kwan. So he was just thinking Kurt Cobain. He's like, oh, that's a sick name. Not knowing that it's a play on Kurt Cobain. Uh, Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't know who Kurt Cobain was until I was in high school. Really? So did you know who Kurt Cobain was first? (laughs) Nah, because that wasn't until like I was like in college. True. But yeah, but like, yeah, it was, uh, somebody said something, about, I was like, who's that? Every single white kid in the class, like, was infuriated immediately. <laughs> Get out. They're like, how do you not know who that is? I'm just like, because, what the fuck, are you? yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like, yeah, y'all don't Kurt, know who Okay, but could Kurt Cobain make drink in my cup, though? It's like, oh, I, I feel like. Yeah, that's, a, yeah that's, that's a great question. The answer is no. I would want to hear it. Yo, now with AI, we can Kirk find out. Things, like the entirety of Nevermind. Yeah, like it's, yes, he could. It's not a hard I album. Mean, right? It's not. <laughs> I could have done Drinking My Cup is probably at the tempo of like something in the way. Man, now Drinking My Cup, we have to put that in here because that's such an iconic way to like start off. I don't know instruments really well. I don't know if you guys know like music theory. Or like what it is that makes yeah. it that noise, but that wow, I guess a guitar based on how what I'm doing with my hands. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. When it, when it had like the whammy uh, thing on it yeah, or whatever. Exactly, yeah. the Guitar Hero whammy bar. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> the whammy bar. <laughs> Is that a real thing? Or wait, yeah, like real yeah, guitar. Really yeah. Me not being a music critic yeah. for a sec. That's crazy. Wow. I mean, it doesn't have. It's not like if your guitar doesn't have a whammy bar on it, it's not a real guitar. Uh, it's it's not like it's just an oversized ukulele. But yeah. if you want to like, if you want to let the real you heads know, on it. if you want to put some stank on it, yeah, you exactly. Screw that yeah. Whammy bar in. So I yeah. take that to mean that none of the people who are music journalists here, I guess, uh, play musical instruments. I have to play mm-hmm. football to know someone's good in there. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. All, All right, right. Well, let's let's go back to bit. asking you. Oh, you play piano? Oh, you out here tickling the ivory? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. like... oh shit! You have a piano right. in your room. Can you like, board? Can you write us a theme song? Mm. Oh god, you're just making me do shit now. Um... Not like, not like on the spot, <laughs> but just in general. What, what, what type say, beat? You can say so, no. What, what are we, what are we thinking? Like, what type beat? Plug, plug, obviously. No, no, I want to, I want a Chief Keef type beat. Like what era of Chief Keef? Like a, like a more, like a self, like a self-produced Chief Keef song, like a Young Chop. I guess I want the kind of beat that Chief Keef selected for the last song on Finally oh, Rich sicko. when he typed in chief keith type beat on youtube found a beat he liked and then bought the beat i did not know that but that's uh, I'll, I'll do my research I'll, I'll i'll okay i got you guys i can't say how soon i, have I don't like, to make beats but uh i'll see what i can it, do. this is a long-term ask yeah. it's fine it does suck to think that like we did stuff that didn't really matter like we we wrote about that extensively that sick go beat thing and like, that's just like common lore and like nobody it's lost in like history because that shit doesn't really get cataloged like that random trivia a few a few months ago i interviewed maddox's mom um because i was like (laughs) i saw this video of him like dancing like i don't know how i i I just like feel like i had this in my brain somewhere i was like i need to go find the video of maddox dancing when he was like seven so i looked that up and i found it and then i i like shared it on the on the twitter account and went like super viral and then I was like, I need to know how this happened. So I'm going to interview Maddox's mom. And that whole time I was kind of thinking, like, I feel like this is some shit, like, noisy would do, like, <laughs> back when shit, shit didn't really matter, like, like eight years ago or something. I don't know. I want to hear more about, about the youth. How oh, do, I hear less like, the youth. well, I'm just interested in, like, how young people, like, are engaging with music now. In general? Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know anything about anything anymore. I'm just like a fucking husk of a man wanting to rewater my barren brain with fucking moisture of knowledge from the youth. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's like, <laughs> all right. That's a, that was a, that was an insane 
string of words first of all but, uh no, I, think, I think um i think it was like i i think for me personally just i mean i, I think everybody it's it's very dispersed these methods of engaging with music but like i think a lot about how like especially in the sound like the underground rap worlds which mm -hmm. is like what i'm like mostly looking at like people like seem to like listen like there's so much more like I guess like absurdity and, and, and meme meme shit happening. Like, like I, I can't tell if like, and this is maybe where I even feel, I feel like I'm too old to really understand some of the shit. Cause it's like 15, 16 year olds, but it's like, you guys are all like engaging with these Instagram accounts, like just posting like, uh, like f there's this artist like summers or something like this plug and be artist summers. Like, and when he drops an album, like some account, like Instagram account will be like, did Summers just drop like this generation's whole lot of red or something? Like <laughs> obviously like a totally <laughs> ironic post, but like they'll do that for like every single like random album in the scene. And like people like engage with these artists in such like kind of like, I don't know, meme like unserious ways, even though they seem, they clearly care about them a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and that's like a weird tension that I think has like permeated a lot of music listening. Like everything's kind of like unserious, but also like I know everything about this artist and like who their mom is, and shit <laughs> like that. Like it's just, it's just like it's really weird. So people expect artists to be like fully open, in part so that they can just uh, talk about them with extreme hyperbole. Yeah, and I'm like I'm not even sure if the hyperbole is like real. It's like it's just like it's just like exaggerated like funny shit just for yeah. the likes and stuff. On that's like my abstract answer to your question. I feel like I feel like the literal answer is probably just like TikTok and whatever. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I guess also I'm interested in like you know I think that to someone like me who is a bit more removed, I look at this stuff and I'm like, I wonder how the differences in technologies that young people like use today versus like when I was their age, like affects how we engage with music. And like, maybe the answer is not that much. Like, I don't, I don't know. You got to be my emissary to an entire generation. Go. God. Um, <laughs> Sorry. What, is what, is, what the hell? <laughs> Wait. Wait, what did you even ask? <laughs> Wait, can I help him out a little bit? Because I kind of have a follow-up question. And, like, do you, do you find that a lot of the people that are making music now are, like, content creators or they're, like, artists? Hmm. And do you think they've had to adjust their output based on the mm. platforms available to them. Or are people trying to get popular or are there people who are like, my goal is to put out like a sick seven inch and like have sort of like a claim within my local scene. I think like one thing I've noticed is definitely that like ideas of like subcultures, like subcultures, I feel like just can't exist properly anymore mm. um or if they do exist then they are very quickly like penetrated by some observer from like up above whether that's an a and r journalist or, from like, vice uh, magazine i don't know yeah journalists <laughs> from nobels you know uh, <laughs> just kidding oh uh, hopefully i don't know um but like I don't know, a good example would be like the hyper pop shit, right? Like that was like a big, that, like, and I'm, I'm, I feel like that's such a, like, I don't even know what that shit means anymore. But like the the way in which like that scene, like or scene, like because internet scenes aren't really real. Like th that thing was like this underground thing for, for like a hot second. And then very, very quickly like became corporatized and like extracted mm -hmm. for, for wealth and like, the scene makes, became this like, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is that like, that is like the fault of, of like these, of like the labels and of like people and of like the DSPs as well. But it's also, I think, created a mindset in a lot of artists of like, I just need to blow up. Like I just need to like go, go viral. Like that's the only way to make it. Cause also it was like capitalism. There's like fewer ways to like make a living. Doing mm -hmm. shit, so. Yeah. And then I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, 
it seems like a lot of younger people like they're it's like a lot of music exists like divorced of context or something and that's not like a knock on them because it's also like a like 18 year old has access to like infinite music on the internet and i think about like city pop which is like a genre that i found out about completely from the internet the same time that it like blew up but it seems like i don't know like that shit happens for like kate bush meanwhile yeah yeah. and it's not like a bad thing it's just like an interesting thing yeah and i think the people who care will like still do their research and figure shit out like i don't know um i feel like when yeet for instance blew up not to go back to that guy but like he blew up um he was divorced of context for like a lot of people and still is for sure but like the people who like kind of fueled his rise i would say like are doing all that like i'm not sure where you can always find the best inf- the best journalism about him but like there's like it's like dispersed all across the internet in various like little pockets like you can find like one dude's like 75 percent accurate eat documentary or, or like, <laughs> about, like you know what i mean like just like the origins of like his group his like gr- group that disbanded and like how they all met in some instagram group chat or whatever and then you could find like i don't know like the uh, some tiktok that somebody else made about it i don't know it's, it's just like i feel like for how like little institutional like coverage there's of this shit there's like definitely a lot of like diy like arc archiving trying like people are like trying to do which mm-hmm. um isn't always in the it's always isn't always easy to find but like it's all it's always people who are like really young too and like just like doing clearly they have nothing else to do and they're just kind of bored probably at home where do you look for stuff like where do you find stuff um i feel like just like a mix of i don't know like such a i don't know like twitter i feel like i go to sound i'm I'm, i i still be on i'm on soundcloud a lot these days um I think SoundCloud's like the worst designed app, but also like and just like a janky ass app. Yeah, it seems to be getting worse by the year. (laughs) But (laughs) but it's also like, unfortunately, the like best place to discover music. I think like, Mm -hmm. especially like some of this shit that just not like rap, like like not just like rap shit. Like I feel like a lot of like the the you know like Brazilian funk shit's Mm -hmm. all in SoundCloud and like a lot of like the. like i mean dance music for sure still kind of pop like pops off on there and that's because they don't want to upload to spotify so because like they can't for whatever reason like they didn't clear the samples or that could be one reason i think like more often it's just like people are like li- like they just want to like drop they, they make a song they just want to drop it that night or whatever and they just like do it like it's very like i can't snap it's very Got like it. instant nobody's thinking about like peak posting times and doing you know, scheduling and analytics and all that kind of stuff. It's just like throwing it out into the world. It's punk. I bet, I bet, I bet there's some of that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I feel like, I feel like artists are usually just posting shit on there. The, one thing I have noticed, um, which I learned from talking to artists, but also just like from a person who used to work at SoundCloud is that uh, there's like an absurd amount of privated music on SoundCloud. Like, like, more than you could like maybe ever imagine like just like and a lot of artists will like just like keep things like in like the in like the chamber like on there for like months and months and then like finally drop it or something or like never drop it um yeah it's it's like but it's like a lot more than i ever thought i don't know so that's interesting. well because you can upload it and then just share the link privately right so it's like a one-to-one hmm, interesting yeah yeah, it is kind of dystopian yeah. that, like, in this future, the best we can hope for is, like, a punk streaming app. Like, no, I have Spotify and Apple Music or, like, corporate, man. I only upload to SoundCloud. <laughs> Which is, like, not... I feel like that's just a, that's such a lame, like... That's not punk at all. I don't know. It's, like, I mean, it's, like, it's, st- so it's just, like, a another DS, another Spotify or Apple Music. I don't know. Yeah, I guess, like... Definitely. For your generation, like punk and DIY and all that kind of stuff, like what does that kind of look like in the mainly internet era? It's so weird. Like I feel like I feel like punk is just not real. Um, I I think 
it's funny. We were talking about a whole lot of red, like that album. Everybody was calling it like a punk album, and I was just like, the whole time I was just like, this is such a, that's a that's a commercial rap album. Like this is such a like literally not. This is literally not punk. This is like the opposite <laughs> of punk. Like it sounds sure it sounds like daring maybe or whatever. If you've never heard this shit before, but like, even the people who were like Cardi heads, like they were some some of them were like this was kind of derivative when that came out. But anyways. Um, to answer the question, I, I, I will say I feel like one thing that I saw recently that was very DIY was I was out in Milwaukee for like for a few days, like a few weeks ago um, to like interview some artists out there and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I think their scene, their rap scene right now is like very emblematic of like DIY out of necessity because they have no infrastructure for the shit out there. Um, but also because I think they've also avoided the gaze of like mm. the internet for so long and of, of these like power structures and like because of that they they've actually now it's changing like there's definitely like industry interest in some of the artists out there but um what do you want it what do you want nobels to grow into like what do you want it to be and like you know yeah i'm still figuring that out i'm not gonna lie here's like the l of God, I don't want to say elevator pitch. But like, the thing, like the gener- the abstract thing of what Nobel's is, is probably like something like, uh, like encounters with like culture, like before it happens. If that makes sense. Like, which is so, mm-hmm. it's it's a working thing. It's that's really corny. But like, I think like the things that have popped off for us the most and have been like the most fun to edit and just like 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 really sh- like investigate have been things that are like just like like the like just like weird like ephemera on the internet and like uh in music scenes that kind of has its it's clearly not like yet invaded like everybody's timelines and not yet been like fully turned over um and then like it gets turned over a few months later or something and then like everybody goes back and finds our shit about it from you know that's that's like the most fun to me it's like that stuff so i think i want to like keep uh keep at it with like just like these weird these like scene reports and like that's that's like the focus for me is like getting more stuff published in that vein and then uh definitely like more like i want to add video to it not uh, not pivot to video i want to add video to it um because i like making videos Mm. yeah and i have and i have a friend who like does nobels with me who's like very much in that he's like a video person so like um we like shot a lot of footage in the in the milwaukee scene which we're like editing right now Mm -hmm. which i think will be cool um and i think like that's another like prong and then the final thing would definitely be like live events and stuff like that um so we got like Mm -hmm. we did our first show at the end of last year with like rx poppy and like a bunch of other guests and then Mm -hmm. we're having like another one like this end of this week actually in brooklyn oh uh, it's like pop star benny and who's like this big this kind of like rising atlanta dj and producer um and a couple other acts but he's like somebody we've been covering for a while so we we're like we should do a show with him so it sounds like the main right. thing is like you're trying to build community like you're actually trying to get people to come out and like meet other people which is noble no bells. no it's no bells Yes. I saw that. Uh, but I'm you guys sorry. still you have the Discord, you have the online community. I like your Discord. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's kind of dead right now. I feel like the people in there aren't really like it's like a few writers for sure, but it's a lot of just like random like heads, which makes me happy. It's like it's like you don't have to be a music writer if you can just like music a lot, you know? Like you can just like do a, be a botanist or something. And like <laughs> Also enjoy music. If you're a botanist, you don't have the time to write about music, man. You, yeah, you're deep in the plants. <laughs> no, no, it's definitely it was. I, I mean, shout out to the botanists. Like, I feel like they keep the they keep these spaces clean and green. Shout out botanists. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, man. We need like really dedicated botanists, man. We're losing a lot of green space in a lot of places. Hello, Doctor Green Thumb. Paging Doctor Green Thumb. Hello. 
did you watch the congressional hearings about aliens? Yeah, I watched like the one like 45 second clip that went viral. And then I just kind of like read mm-hmm. read tweets about it and just like, like, like pulled from my vat of knowledge about which isn't that deep about uh, like aliens. I was just like remembering random documentaries I saw and stuff. Being like, oh, what did you? Roswell. What did you think about aliens before? I, I I had a feeling they were real. I don't know. Like the, I mean, I feel like it's it's like the go to argument, but like it's just too the universe is too vast. You know, like there's like you really got to be a hopeless person if you think there isn't anything else out there. I feel. Do you think we're fucked? Like humanity, like the fact that like we are advanced enough, like. You know, the book, The Three Body Problem, sort of, or the trilogy, sort of advances this argument in a slightly different form. But the fact that we have become advanced enough as a civilization to potentially just have fucking aliens, like, underground, living in a fucking secret zoo or some shit, uh, like that probably means that we are about to be advanced enough to go to another planet. And if the history of like global powers on earth teaches us anything, we're going to try to do some fucked up shit on another planet, which means the aliens are completely justified in taking us out before we can do it. Your reaction. Um, I mean, I think, I think, I think that the aliens want to take us like, they should go for it. Like, I don't know. They, 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 they can beat us. Like, they should just, like, I want to see what they're made of, you know? Like, I'm not I'm not saying I'm going to fight them, but I'm saying, like, I feel like, you know, there's so many worse ways to go out than, like, aliens. I feel like... I feel like if I we feel- just told them, like, yo, shoot me the fair one, and it was just, like, you know, straight up, you know, street fight, no guns, no weapons or whatever... <laughs> I think I think it'd be like pretty even on like if a human could be the alien. Wait, what are you talking about? Like if we, well, yeah, what type of what alien? If they're are giant talking? bugs. Uh, giant bugs would have come down here by now. No, I'm talking about like six feet tall, like Kareem Abdul Jabug. That he was would like be seven, seven feet one. tall. Yeah, like number one. I feel like a, I feel like just like a, a a a really big like ant spray could take that out though. <laughs> like just like the same, it's probably made of the same stuff, so. Also, like if they're a bug, like they're they're not like you could probably just punch through them. Uh, it's it'd be gross on your hands. Seven feet but, tall. Yeah. It's huge. It's it's got an exoskeleton. That would be the scariest thing to me. I would prefer like a big squishy. I'd do it. I'd prefer like to fight something bigger, squishy, or big and furry than like a big bug. I think it's I not, fear. But this is also like not the only kind of interpretation of aliens there's ever been in sci-fi or pop culture. Like there's so many different right. types. That's. Like the cone heads, man. You know, the, the cone heads. I would fuck up the cone heads. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, but I think the cone heads would just want to fucking party. Like they would be going to the Nobel's show on Friday, which the oh, listeners I should welcome. go to. I need, I need them. I need them to hear some uh, fuck music. Some man, they, man, their heads would explode. Card. They're not used to those frequencies. <laughs> yeah, if you want to win the war, man, just send like an MP3 of a fucking Cardi song up to mars and like yeah those motherfuckers are done <laughs> i feel like some brazilian funk would kill them i don't know just like the the, the i don't know if you've heard that shit the, the loudness is off is so that shit's like oh yeah that, 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 that Timaya shit yeah. oh yeah yeah like the boom, 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 like just like crazy itch. sense and like like yeah it makes like my brain almost like explodes so i feel like it would probably like one hit ko you guys, ha- you guys haven't seen, yeah. what is that, Close Encounters? Where the... Dun, 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 dun. The aliens are already far ahead of us on this music shit. <laughs> that was Rick Rubin. Oh, one time I talked, R.I.P. Dolph, but like, yeah, I talked to Dolph and Glock one time about different things that might be real. And then we started talking about aliens, and they talked about alien music. <laughs> what, did they think about? what did they say? Yeah. Oh, let me let me see if I can find this. But yeah, uh, I, it was like one of those three part questions I used to do, where it was uh, like, which of these are real, like vampires, werewolves, or aliens, or some shit. And Glock said all of them. <laughs> werewolves? He said and werewolves like, are real. I was like, so you believe in all of them? And he was like, I don't believe in them, but they are real. Damn. And I was like, yo, that's. That's so real. Vampires, I can see people <laughs> believing vampires. Werewolves, no. I mean, like, 
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that vampire is fairly plausible, especially like uh, in antiquity in terms of like just a human trying to be super fucking intimidating. Like vampire. Oh, it's so like a fake, a fake vampire. Okay, like I, a I, I found it. Hold on. Yeah, like vampiric behavior is within the realm of human potential. Although becoming a fucking dog is also in the realm of human yeah, potential. Not, Yo, I saw that. Video. <laughs> yeah, that's that's being a fucking werewolf right there. That's not, I mean, okay. If you want to count that. I don't think that's being a werewolf. That, 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 dude, that dog was, was the least intimidating thing. Okay, it's like a were, a were collie or whatever. But when like, I saw the look in that dog's eyes. No, because werewolf implies biological changes. He just put on a costume. Oh, did he? I thought he got like surgery to fit in the costume. No, he straight up put on a costume. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh, it's not okay. even like what, what Maureen Ponderosa from Goddamn <laughs> Always Sunny who wanted to become a cat. It's not even that. This motherfucker just got a furry suit, a very realistic one, but a furry suit nonetheless. Yeah. All right, it goes well, like sixteen thousand. Furry suit without a dick hole. Yeah. <laughs> all right. First of all, furries is not always sexual. Uh, furries are just people trying to live their Nobody, lives. Nobody's judging them. Yeah, but it's not always sexual. I didn't like, say it was. You mentioned dick holes in a furry yeah, suit. Sometimes you got to fucking pee when you have a furry suit on. Like I don't know. Like yeah. You're, you're, you're backtracking, like, Trey. Have my dick. <laughs> you're. <laughs> Anyway, no, you right. assumed that just because people are furries, that that means they look. Are if there's furries. anybody in this podcast who's an ally to furries, it's me. Okay, you you don't know what, what we do. What do you mean? Ally to furries and everybody in here combined. Furry I recognize them as one of the most important uh, factions in the fight against anti-fascism. All right. All right. Yeah. Yep. I, fuck, I fuck with furries hard. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't try to besmirch my name. <laughs> Let me cancel. Cheese in my pockets, velvet up. We just store all our surplus cheese in a vault. So, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, you know, you, you know about now the cheese. That we definitely talked about. Yeah, we definitely talked about the, the cheese. Vault. I don't think about our ass, so, Yeah. Yeah, my. <laughs> All right, so underneath Springfield, Missouri, there is a limestone vault that contains over 1 billion pounds of cheese made in the U.S. You're, wait, what? I'm not making this, this up. This is real? This is real. Wait, Google wait, Springfield, Springfield, Missouri. Cheese vault? Oh, yeah. Oh, I, lo I love seeing people learn about this for the first time. It's so, it's so, oh. You have to find if there's wait, a burgeoning oh, rap scene over there that you can find a reason to go visit. You can tap into and see if they're talking about the cheese. Um, why does yeah, it have 1.4 billion pounds of cheese here? All right, I think I found. Place is named Ozark. Wait, is it just there. like? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one. That's the one. Wow, there's so many like crazy headlines about this. <laughs> Wait, so yes, why you can this, see everything. Why, how did this cheese thing even happen? I'm I'm like reading right now, kind of, but. Uh, uh, we just make too much cheese in this country. Oh, is it like a is it like a New Deal thing where like the government pays farmers for the surplus? Yeah, I think so. I think that's well. I actually think it might be like a Reagan thing. Mm, but that's, that's where like government thing. cheese comes from. They should give all the cheese to the whales in an attempt to make peace. Oh no, the whales are the least of our fucking problems now. Did y'all hear about the cocaine sharks? What? Yep. Yep. We got cocaine sharks now. Yeah. Yeah. This is why we got to legalize like all drugs so we can keep the cocaine out of the shark's jaws. Like, if it were legal to transport port cocaine to America, the number of shark attacks would fall dramatically. I'm like on my Matt Iglesias shit right now. I'm trying to wonk out, figure out all the like. Okay, but. All the unintended consequences. Okay, but wait, hang on a second. Let's think this out. What if we don't do that because people need to eat and we need to support the drug industry? But what if we <laughs> weaponize the cocaine sharks to go on our side in the human versus whale wars that are coming up? And then we kind of like get. Sorry, wait, I don't what, have any what, information. What is about the human that? versus whale? Uh, the, the humans are being attacked by the whales, and as a result of that, we need to fight back. Oh, yeah. Uh, orcas have been, like, fucking up, like, Oh, the orcas. Ships. Right, right, right. Yeah. 
Although, like, we're also thinking too small here. Like, you know, humans might not be able to take the aliens down on their own, but if we fucking get the sharks geeked up and enlist the help mm. of the whales, I think we have a chance. I like that. But then we have to kind of, like, convince the aliens to go to the bottom of the ocean, which could be tricky. Well, we don't know if they're not aquatic you know like maybe they're just cruising around the galaxy in like aquariums yeah, fucking aquariums that'd be sick in which case we'll need the sharks and the whales to sort of like and dolphins to sort of like be like the the officers in the earth do you think army. if in that scenario there would be any like earth people that would immediately switch sides and fight for the aliens i think you would because you fucking hate whales no but in this scenario okay i don't hate whales i just said like i like humans no, you I, hate I whales. just said we, i like we, humans we. more than i like <laughs> whales i don't think that's a controversial thing to say that i like my own species you guys tried to call me friggin uh uh human dr umar well you said a worse one but i'm gonna say human dr umar <laughs> human doctor <laughs> anyway he, he, yeah he, he's species no you know? i'm just yeah. no i, I don't Speciesist. that's a real thing yeah he's a species anyways all right uh <laughs> uh travis cardi and uzi's releases this year puts listen to the kids as a motto into oh, yeah. question do you think that's that's something that is written on our run of show. Do you... I don't know why I wrote it like that. Um, do you still think that's a good idea? Listen to the kids. Who said? I don't know what listen to the kids is. <laughs> what is, is that a motto? Whose motto is I that? I used to say it all the time. I feel like Complex in like 2013 to 15 was listen built around the, kids, the motto, bro. listen to the kids. Virgil used to say it. Fuck it. I'm sure Drake has even said it. I mean, you still listen to the kids. It's just like the kids are having a rough time right now. Just listen to, like, the k- kids who make good music, not, like, those kids. Those aren't even kids. How old is Cardi? I feel like Cardi's, like, old. What kids should we listen to? He's 38. <laughs> <laughs> I love that trend a few years ago on Twitter. People just, like, saying that Rich the Kid was, like, 42. <laughs> like, just random rappers. <laughs> like, Nav is 48. Or so. Like, I don't, I don't oh, yeah. I don't know. That, was, that was when I was thinking, like, yeah, Nav uh, has an AARP card. And yeah. <laughs> Na- Nav, Nav was around for, for the first Cool Herc party. You know. <laughs> <laughs> he gave Cool Herc the, the green light. <laughs> it's such a stupid trend. I don't, know, I don't know where that came from, but, anyways. Uh, so what's um, no, saying, certain people, question? Certain, saying certain people are older than they actually are will always be funny. Yeah. Who's a kid we should listen to then? Oh, um, well, well, in Drew's case, Yeet. Yeet? you should listen to Yeet just for like I feel cultural awareness. Like, all right, the way the way I would listen to like I don't know, I can't think of an opposite example. Um, fish, uh, you ever listen to Bat Fish? Why? I almost went to a fish concert this week, actually. Someone is, like, trying to make me go to this fish concert. For, like, you should go to a fish show. They're, like, fun. Like No, I almost went, but then I got King Cruel tickets, so I'm going to go to that instead. And yeah, fish tickets were $100. From each. Mario? That was crazy. I was like, I can't. Oh. No, no, no. King Cruel. Yeah, from t- tomorrow. Oh, from Donkey Kong. And England. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. Gotcha. No. Wait, yeah, King, actually, dude. King Cruel's voice coming out of King Cruel's face remains one of the funniest things in the world to me. <laughs> yes, it's crazy. It's, I mean, that's why I still like want to see him. I think it's just like, I feel like I haven't really like been that passionate about his music in a while. But I just like want to see that man. Like, I want to see like that voice emanate from that redhead's like mouth. <laughs> Are you gonna be sad? Famous. Are you going to be sad if it turns out he has some sort of like box that he runs his voice through to make it sound like that? <laughs> oh, he's not fibbing. He's definitely not fibbing. Okay. Like, I've seen videos and stuff. Have I you hope. seen like, have you seen how much have you been able to see in the frame? I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I see. Did you go to the Salem concert in the roller or in the bumper car thing? Great question. Uh, no, but I was of trying to go and I like, I actually, some, somebody hit me up being like, can I cover this for you guys? And I was like, yes. And then he, t- he like did all the work of like 
getting in touch with i don't know if you know it was it was hosted by pornhub um but like pornhub's i saw this person and she was like no we unfortunately are like having barely any press here however we d- we love nobel's interviews did they love nobel's enough to at least let you interview one of the salem dudes no <laughs> not enough that sucks uh give it another 10 years maybe I- like when they do the next show <laughs> <laughs> i mean i feel like i have never had the misfortune of interviewing salem but like it seems like it seems just like the worst experience um, in a way that could really, it could really help, uh, a young writer mature by having to go through interviewing Salem. That or Yeet. I want to interview Yeet oh, is... because he seems like an absolute, like, like non-person. Like, no, like, this is definitely ruining my chances of interviewing Yeet, but like that dude, like, I need to like know what's going on in here. Cause he, every interview he does, he's only done like two or three interviews. They're all just like he's like he's like a robot like i don't know what what goes on in here and i feel like he needs somebody to like like get on his level a little bit and just like let's go let's go in general it's like really refreshing to hear that you are like putting shit on in new york that exists outside of like the shit that i always that people are like always talking about which is like dime square bullshit um and Salem Pornhub concerts. Are you like self-sustaining off Nobels? No, <laughs> I've I'm like that was a very blunt answer. No, uh, I I'm like trying to figure out sort of that shit. But I think for now I'm gonna go look for a job mm. and like keep it going on the side for a bit. Um, Do you want to talk on record about like kind of the the experience of trying to like make a make a money making media entity or is that like not something you're interested yeah, in talk... no that's cool um it's important i mean like it's it's like you know it might actually help me like figure my own shit out when i talk about it so like I, honestly okay. the main thing is that i feel like is really tough right now is like we are like in a place where we have like a pretty big uh following but it's kind of dispersed amongst like mediums in a way so like we have mm-hmm. like a youtube we, youtube is actually kind of not popping but like we have a tiktok that people will sometimes like notice me or notice people from my like nobels from we have um like the, the blog itself like the twitter account like sometimes like people see that like mm-hmm. first um so like it's a it's a question of like how to like like do we pursue like like what's like i'm not even sure what our like thing is for like the most people right now like because like for a lot of kids like who fuck with us it's like it's like not even the articles it's just like the we'll vibe we posted up a we'll just be like recording things at events and like post mm-hmm. we'll be like under elliot wilson we'll like be posting like some <laughs> random video from like some show and like the middle of nowhere in, in like a rave or something and it'll like go viral or something um on some like tv i don't know um but and it's also i got i would bet it's also like hard to if you know you've got like a base that is making you go, you go viral, but it's like teenagers. It's hard to be like, Hey, why don't you give us five bucks a month or whatever when they're like, yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. it's not the same like Substack thing. Right. It's mm-hmm. like, we can't, we could, we could start doing and I've, I've been like, I have a little Patreon. That's like basically just a tip jar. Like I don't really like, I'm trying to like s- figure out a better incentive thing, but like, um, I'm not sure like the, what are the appetite is for like pay like paywalled like Nobel's articles like if there even is one yet so like that's that's what mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out right now so yeah and then I think, like I think, like the shows yeah oh sorry go ahead. oh I was just gonna say like it seems like one of the reasons that people fuck with y'all is that like you are finding like new interesting things which is sort of like opposed to the model of like, let's get a bunch of traffic and then sell ads against that traffic. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about becoming an agency? Just being like, we're an agency now. That's how a lot of people make money. What is that? Like, what do you do as an agency? You're an agency. Like you just agent. You, you like consult and like, 
you tell like basically like i don't know like fucking skull chewing tobacco like pays you money to tell them what's cool so that they can figure out oh. how to make like skull appealing to zoomers like taking the fucking like dip cup challenge or whatever <laughs> i don't know what the dip cup challenge is yet but you know what i mean that's like basically yeah, yeah you could charge somebody 20 grand for just saying dip cup challenge okay i'll keep that in mind for sure i'm i'm, I'm gonna take that exact phrase and <laughs> start saying it in like different label meetings okay three words <laughs> difficult challenge but labels have reached out um, no but i haven't thought about that, 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 that that's maybe yeah yeah um but you don't want to go that way i'm or? just like i don't know like i'm i'm not sure yet i'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie I, I i think i think like the label stuff has been like very clearly in like a we fuck with your taste type of way like like almost some a and r mm -hmm. shit but like i don't know if i want to like mm -hmm. do that because uh it seems pretty i don't know some yeah like it but I, I'm I'm not the biggest fan of like being an A and R, so at least right now in my life. So yeah. Is that just from like a critical purist standpoint where you can't critique something that you also worked on, or is it just not something that appeals to you? I think the main thing is that it's it makes it harder for me to enjoy the music. Like so maybe that is a critical purist standpoint. I'm not sure. But it's on a more fundamental level, it's like I don't even know like I feel like I would have less like interesting things to say about music if I was an ANR. I got one more question. Sure. Will you post a uh, golf core? <laughs> like a review or a, <coughs> what are you thinking? What are we talking? Do you not know about golf core? That's your, what's your book called? Is that your book? How Golf Can Save Your Life. But I made a compilation uh, of original music from notable names uh, such as Teen Days, DJ Burn One, Judge Beats, who has made beats for Young Thug, uh, fucking other people, Bergsonist, um, other people as well that I'm forgetting. Uh, and y'all should fucking write about it. That's actually, that sounds kind of, you said DJ Burn One? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, Burn One's my and that's man. Like, and, and that's like a soundtrack to the book, like while you're reading the book, how does that work? So I just asked people to imagine that a genre called golf core existed and then make golf core songs. And it like- That was, that was, only, that was only rules? Yeah. Wow. And that's that's kind of sick. Do you play yeah. golf? And like Thank you. how how like what were the what was the most like surprising interpretation of that you received? Um so uh the writer and singer Zachary Lopez and his wife Zora made like a almost like if sparks the band were goth song called too many holes <laughs> and it's like a very languid song about a dying relationship that just uses but is described completely in golf terms wow that's that's wild <laughs> yeah yes. it's out I, I can go listen to this yeah it's at how golf can save your life dot bandcamp dot com yo okay okay I'll, I'll um here i'm gonna i'm gonna send it to you in this chat and then i'm gonna fucking dm you on twitter the link okay and then i i'm i'm mild, I'm, I'm pretty curious i'm not gonna lie how golf can save your life yeah um if you're still listening like and subscribe <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't know why you would be but uh well, this has been Nerzy. Thank you for listening. If you have listened this far, then that means you absolutely have to go to our Substack and subscribe. Like, listen, we look at the numbers. A lot of y'all motherfuckers are just listening and not subscribing. 
Um, I even retweeting and sharing links, you know? Yeah. Cause I see the social, I see the social analytics too. And like, come listen, we on. see your IP addresses. I know where you live. Subscribe to the show. Fucking <laughs> pay us money, motherfuckers. Um, or no, pledge us money. We're, we're pre-revenue. Anyways, uh, <laughs> I've been Drew. Everyone else, including our guest, must say their name. I've been Trey. John here. Mono. Nobels. Yeah. Also, go to Nobels. Go to the Nobels show. And uh, I actually, this is a, this is a Nerzy exclusive. Uh, we have been told that this year, at the end of the year, Nobels will be awarding their favorite music of the year, the Nobel Prize. Hey. It's happening. Good night, everybody. That's, 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 that's factual. Damn. Yes. And, yeah. uh, fuck Elliot Wilson.
A slice in the rough, a wedge 